Hi, I'm Megan and I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Thank you for joining me for another video. Today it is Friday and so that means it's time for Friday Sews. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to have some time today to have a nice hot cup of coffee. Well, okay, it's not hot cup of coffee. It's like lukewarm. It's maybe a tepid cup of coffee. It's neither cold nor hot, which is kind of unfortunate. But I have some coffee and I have some time and we can chat. The last time I talked to you on a Friday, I was planning for a week of solo parenting time as my husband was going out to um, sort of clean out his mom's house, which we have sold. And I did not get as much sewing done during that week as maybe I thought I might, which is okay because I had a very good reason. So I had my second dose of COVID vaccine two weeks ago and the side effects, like, you know, it took the wind out of my sails for a couple days. It was nothing major, but I had two little kids and I was working and I wasn't feeling hot. So I didn't do a ton of sewing, but I did get a couple things done. So I finished two just really basic knit um, tank tops that I had cut out, both of them pattern emporium patterns, which I love, both of them ones I had made before. So one is for working out, one's just for hanging around. Um, and then I also made the Love Notions Harmony tank top. So I had told you about that in my last episode of Friday Sews as well. Uh, so I apologize for the repetition, but um, in case you're watching these back to back, you must be thinking like, oh my God, she's talking about the same thing again. But for me, it's been two weeks since we chatted. But anyway, I made, I finished my Harmony blouse and I love it. I am thrilled with the way that that top fits, the way it feels, the way I look in it. Um, I, it needs to be washed, but here it is. I'm gonna put my coffee down so I don't spill it. Um, but yeah, here it is. It is just a woven tank top, swing shape, so it flares out. It's got a shirt tail hem. It's finished with bias binding. So it's, this is the back, there's a seam. It is a snap to put together, um, but it's not, it's also not boring. Like it's, it's more challenging than a knit tank top in that, you know, you gotta press the seams, it's got bias binding. It has a little button on the back, which um, I think the next one I make, I'm just gonna sew that shut because I don't actually need it to open to get over top of my head. Um, but it, it's just, it was really nice, relaxing, but engaging sewing. I had to think about the sewing while I was doing it so I couldn't think about other stuff. Um, but I am, I am thrilled with it. I wore it out. We went for brunch on Father's Day and I wore it with um, just some skinny jeans and a white denim jacket and I felt awesome in it. I'm, I'm very happy with it. And I think I'm going to cut out at least one more of these with some rayon that I have in my stash. Just, you know, it's just perfect for summer. Like it's not tight. Um, this polyester doesn't breathe, so I won't be wearing this when it's like 37 degrees next week. Um, but I just, you know, it's gonna be the pattern that I keep in mind when I have, when I'm cutting out um, another garment out of a woven and I think I have enough left over. Like, you know those odd, because it's seamed up the back, you can get this garment out of, you know, about a meter of fabric, I would say. Basically like the length of your body. Um, the front is cut on the fold and then the back is cut on uh, two pieces and seamed up. So. If your pattern is non-directional, you can flip that. And I easily got the, um, and I made an extra large to an XXL at the hip. I easily got it across the width of fabric. So I used like a tiny bit of fabric for this. So I think it would be good just to keep this pattern like near the front of my pattern bin so that when I'm making shorts or I'm making a dress um, or, or something that I can keep the pattern out and then I can sort of Tetris the pieces in and get two, car two garments out of that cut of fabric. Um, that is my plan for, if you watched the video I posted earlier this week for my summer sewing plans, um, if you haven't watched it yet, you know, make sure you go check it out. But one of the garments I have planned is a Dolce dress for my daughter out of this tie-dyed rayon poplin I bought. And I think that I am going to cut out these two garments at the same time, because I think that if I'm smart with how I lay out the pattern on the fabric, I'll easily be able to get a dress for a seven-year-old and a blouse for myself out of two meters of fabric. Like I think that's totally reasonable. So um, that is going to be, I think, uh, a tested, tried and true, TNT, whatever you want to call it, pattern for me in moving forward. Because I also think um, it looks great under a blazer tucked in um, with a skirt or, you know, under a cardigan. Like it can look quite polished and professional, 
or just great with jeans and shorts. So it's exactly the type of shirt that I get a ton of mileage out of in my wardrobe. The next thing that I have been up to is fitting some shorts. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on my Allegro shorts muslin process. So I talked about how I had cut out the Allegros out of some flannel that I had, and I have two pairs. So the first muslin that I made um, was this one, and I did talk about it in that last Friday So's video, so I'll just be very brief. But I had cut based on my, my body measurements. I cut a 24 at the hip, 26 at the thigh. Um, they were, there was some fitting issues. There was a lot of fabric in the front. They didn't fit great. Um, they're comfortable and they're elastic waist, so like they're not gonna be perfect. But I scooped out the crotch and that seemed to resolve a lot of the problem. Um, then I was sort of playing around with the rise and I watched the video with that Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery made about how she fit her Allegro shorts. Highly recommend you go watch that one. Um, and she was talking about, you know, to check the rise to see if you're happy where it fits. Just roll the waistband over and see if you're more content with that. And I definitely was. So I made a second pair and I wanted to test two things. The first was, did I make them too large? So in grading up to a size 26 for the thigh, you, you know, you grade up in the crotch and you, you don't just grade up like on the outside seams of the thigh. You, there's a number of places where you make that adjustment. So this time I cut just a straight size 24 to see if that was part of the problem was, were the shorts just too big? Is that why I had so much extra fabric? Um, and on these ones, I made a size 24 and I also um, shortened the rise by two inches. So um, ultimately on these ones, the, the fit isn't great. They are too tight in the thigh. So I do need that extra room to go up a size. The rise is good, but I am going to not go two inches. I'm gonna go an inch and a half. So I've cut them out out of my good fabric. Um, and so yeah, so what I did was I made for these ones, it's the five inch shorts, uh, 24 hip to 26 thigh. Um, I didn't take the waist in, even though my waist is probably like the 22 um, based on my body measurement, but it needs to go over my hip. I shortened the rise by an inch and a half. I scooped the front and the back crotch out by a quarter of an inch. And we're just, I'm just gonna go for it. So I think I thought about, oh, should I make another muslin with these changes? But ultimately, like it is gonna be scorching hot here in the next two weeks. Um, like it doesn't typically get above 30 degrees where I live in Calgary. It's gonna be 37 for several days in a row. And we don't have air conditioning because we don't typically need it. Um, so I'm gonna need some shorts. And I think these are gonna be lovely and breathable. And if they're out, if the fit's not perfect on them, that's okay. But I think, I think it's gonna get me pretty close. And I will come back and update you when I have these sewn up. Um, and I, I was smart this time. I keep my patterns once I've traced them in these manila envelopes. And typically I just write the name of the pattern and the, sometimes I remember to write what size it is that I have traced off here. Um, my size fluctuates. Like I have learned now that um, every time I make a pattern, I, I best just do my measurements to see where I'm sitting right now so that I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, happy with the finished garment, not happy with my measurements. My measurements, the numbers, whatever. Uh, but I have this time written on exactly what alterations I've made to the pattern pieces from the master pattern, which is in a roll, like I had it printed AO size, it's in a roll in my closet. But anyway, excited about these, I'm excited to get started on these, and I will keep you updated. But yeah, I have, now I have two pairs of virtually identical pajama shorts to wear. Um, I think that one of them, I didn't finish the seams when I made the second muslin, so I think these are just going to go into sort of like the fabric recycling bin or cleaning rags, like they're flannel, so it'd be great for that kind of thing. And uh, these other ones, yeah, they do make good pajama shorts. They have pockets, um, they're hemmed, they're, they're just fine for that purpose. So um, yeah, so other stuff that I've been up to this week, I feel like I am making all of the same patterns as Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery. I, I, she just posted today a video about the linen lyric dress that she's planning. I also have one planned, the pattern's traced out and the fabric's ready to go. Um, I, I think that's just like 
people have a specific style and I admire her style for sure. Um, she's a member, like she talks often about the Everyday Style School podcast and their capsule wardrobe collection. And I did join the Everyday Style School um, capsule collection, like I bought the collection because I'm interested in, you know, how do you build an outfit that is more than just a t-shirt and pants? Um, that's an area where I think I could, my closet could use a little work, especially for casual wear. Like I, I feel like I look completely different at work and at home sometimes. So on a Saturday, if you saw me at the grocery store, I look completely different in the office. And I think a lot of us who work in sort of like, you know, mid, mid professional work, maybe look that way. But yeah, I, I ran into the manager of my department at the mall a couple of years ago and she looked like she's so she has fantastic style she always looks amazing she's always like fully dressed up um but she looked entirely different casual than she did a business like professional both equally stylish and so that i was wearing like some some bad old navy jeans and a sweatshirt and <laughs> i i think you know i'm maybe not super interested in the concept of creating a capsule or sewing a capsule wardrobe um it's intriguing, but definitely the idea of putting together an outfit. How do you put those pieces that you've made together? How do you think more thoughtfully about what it is that you're adding to your wardrobe when we're sewing to make outfits, to make pieces that go together? Because, you know, like my wacky um, black and white and neon leopard print harmony top, it goes with some basic pants in my wardrobe, but it doesn't go with a ton else. So it, it you know, how, how do I... How do I think more cohesively long term? And I think there's nothing wrong with sewing like fun, random pieces because they excite you. Like that's this is a hobby for me. That's the point. But just to be more mindful of, you know, when I'm planning my projects, can I can I plan them so that I can create outfits? I can wear them more often, and I can you know look just as good at the superstore on a Sunday afternoon as I do walking into the office, uh, you know, on a Tuesday in October and. And ready to run a press conference or whatever anyway um, that's an aside but yeah I have that lyric dress um, ready to go and you know I've been looking at a few other patterns I just picked up the itch to stitch Glenelli t-shirt um, it's a raglan sleeve and it has sort of a really cute squared neckline and I'm not often wild about a raglan sleeve I, I, I have quite narrow shoulders and they like in proportion to my hips not as a frame but I, I find that they don't love the, the way it looks on me. It does. It brings the shoulder in even more narrow and then my hips look wider in comparison. But I just, I thought that the neckline was different. I couldn't um, get it out of my head. Saw the one that Kira, the Island Socialist had made. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'm going to give this pattern a try and see if I like it. So it was, I think the sale is over this weekend, but check that one out. Um, I also pre-ordered the Cashmere book. So, um, Jenny Rushmore from Cashmere has written a book about sewing and fitting for a curvy or plus size body. I am definitely interested in improving my fitting skills, but I do find that often the fit tips for plus size or curvy women, the, the diagrams show the, the fitting, like how the wrinkles lay and the adjustments you might need to make on a like a typical straight size, often very slender frame, as opposed to, you know, I, I might have wrinkles or drag lines and need a different type of adjustment because I have a wider hip and I wanna see what it's gonna look like on a body that's similar to mine. So that was intriguing. And this book comes out in October, so I have pre-ordered it for myself for Christmas, which will come in October. Maybe it'll be my Thanksgiving gift to myself. Thanksgiving in Canada is in October. Um, but yeah, I, I know that I have heard from also from chemists from itch to stitch when she released her book uh, that pre-orders are really important for publishers to show that there is a demand and then booksellers will then have that book to stock so I pre-ordered that book when it came out last year and I've pre-ordered the cashmere book which I think you can pre-order from uh, independent book retailers you can pre-order it from indigo chapters from Amazon whoever you prefer to support with your money uh, around the world I suspect you can pre-order that title other than that, it is going to be really hot, as I mentioned here. So I have been focusing my attention on my little balcony garden. I am a terrible gardener, um, but my mom raised me to believe that it was not talent that mattered so much as enthusiasm. 
And so I'm very enthusiastic about my plants until about the middle of July, end of July, and then I kind of lose interest in them and they die. Um, I would never claim to be a brilliant horticulturalist or even really have an eye for planter design. Like I have friends who do gorgeous planters. I figured out what works based on the amount of sunlight we get at on our balcony. And this year I just planted petunias and they look amazing right now. Like they are lush and they're beautiful and they're my favorite colors. So if I can, I'll put some little videos or photos of them. Um, they're, they're probably parched little thing. For now, I am enjoying sitting out on my balcony with a cup of coffee and iced coffee or, you know, cider or something with my plants, um, enjoying the beautiful weather and thinking about sewing. I might not be actually sewing, though there is an outlet on my balcony, so I could take my machine out there and I could sew on the balcony when it gets too hot, but we'll see what happens. So Anyway, I would love to hear what you are up to, what you have been um, planning, what you've seen lately that has interested you, um, pattern releases you're excited about, all of that good stuff. So I, um, I hope you have a great day and I will see you again soon.